Hey guys, in this video, I'm going to quickly talk about my backup solutions and strategies for all my photos, including my personal and business. So stay tuned. Hey guys, thanks again for tuning in. Now, if this is your first time here in my channel, most of the people that I know knew me as an event and wedding photographer. I've been in photography for almost 10 years and over time I've accumulated I'd say about uh, 40 terabytes of uh, photos that's combined uh, families, business, you know my photo booth and uh, other like miscellaneous stuff. Now I only do photography in the weekends so because you know I do have a, a full-time job as well so yeah I just wanted to share my workflow you know I, so far I've been successful with it and uh, if you've got something or inputs, you know, as I run down all my methods, then you can comment down below. Okay, so who's this video for? Uh, pretty much for everyone, you know, like everyone that takes a lot of photos, um, want to have an organized, uh, like a workflow in terms of taking your photos from the memory card until you, you pretty much back them up. I know it's very simple to say, okay, I've got memory cards, I've backed them up with a hard drive. But, uh, you know, as you, I guess, as you grow up, you know, or step up in terms of your gears and equipment, um, you, you're going to start thinking other ways or automation on how to uh, back up your stuff. So let's get started. All right. So usually for client shoot, I, I obviously shoot raw on both cards. I've, I've got lots of memory cards. Uh, I don't use them until... You know, I've uh, complete all my task for, for that event or that shoot. And then if, if, if I'm shooting for personal, let's just say travel, then that's the only time I'm going to be shooting JPEG um, or RAW uh, or JPEG and RAW. So that way I can share my files right away, you know, to uh, like social media, to, to family or to friends. Now, first thing is you, you always want to name your cards, okay? Because me, I have uh, RR1, which uh, stands for raw, um, like write one, because I've got two slots in my uh, memory card. And then, or you, you can rename it to, to anything that you like. Just it, It's important to name it. And then on your memory cards, uh, make sure you have, you, you have a slot where you put the used one so you don't mix them up. You don't want to use the same memory cards for the same events, unless, you know, that's like your last resort and you ran out of memory. Uh, but again, part of that is prep, uh, your preparation, right? Before you go to event, make sure you've got enough memory or memory card storage. Uh, so that way you can use that solely and it doesn't get mixed up with other events. Because so I got two raw uh, photos on the memory card. So the first card actually gets dumped on my computer. Uh, and then the other one doesn't get uh, formatted until everything, you know, my workflow is complete or I fully uh, archive this uh, archive the photos and deliver it to my clients so again I don't reformat it until that process is done now um, I edit internally on my computer okay so um, a lot of you know uh, that I use Mac system part of it is ease of use and most importantly um, it's because of the time machine okay so because I do have uh, two computers, like two backup systems. I'm using an Apple Time capsule, which stores up to two terabytes, and that actually backs up every day. Okay, I suggest you use a time scheduler. Uh, it's a free app that you can download online, and instead of using the built-in uh, preset uh, time machine, why? It's because the time machine just gets, you know, backs up your photos uh, at set interval. With uh, with this app. Okay, I'll be posting a link below. It lets you set an interval. You know, if you wanted to do it like once a day or like maybe twice, you know, um, twice a week. So you can set your own interval. So you basically override the time machine's uh, schedule. Um, that's why it's called time machine scheduler. So you can set the intervals between one to 12 hours. And then I also have an external SSD where I plugged in Okay, um, I plug it on my uh, on my MacBook Pro, so it will manually. Where I manually plug them in, so it will still automatically back up 
uh, every time I plug in that SSD. And as I'm editing photos, it gets uh, back up during those intervals, which is pretty neat. Okay, and that's what I like about the uh, time machine. Uh, for example, every 24 hours, um, again, even, even when you're sleeping or your set uh, time interval. I use uh, Lightroom to edit all my photos. So again, I do not edit on an external device connected, rather, you know, I dump them first on the computer and it, it helps me edit those photos way faster, okay, instead of like uh, connecting to, let's just say, an external drive, you know, what happens if the, the drive disconnects, right, or the, you know, something faulty might uh, uh, seem to go wrong. I know you can do like smart previews on those, uh, but anyway, yeah, Lightroom is where I spend most of my editing time and then a little bit of Photoshop uh, when I touch up the photos, of course. Uh, that Lightroom cannot do. Um, now, once I've edited the photos to to Lightroom, I do have uh, I well I do have set presets, so I upload them as original, like uh, of course it'll be JPEG, and also as web optimized. Okay, so the original actually gets uh, um, exported. Okay, uh, of course to my Mac. And then it gets exported to my online gallery, which is SmugMug. And and that's the thing I would like to talk about is, uh, you know, like the hard drives, um, external hard drives are, are great, okay, as a backup solution, but you always want to have save some of your photos on the cloud. But if, you, if you're not comfortable doing that, then you can skip this part, okay? Now, the, the photos that are exported are in, uh, are in original or high resolution, so I usually upload or upload the, uh, let it upload overnight. And uh, if you've, um, you know, uh, if, or sorry, there, there is a Lightroom, I believe, plugin for uh, uh, Smugbug. So I've never used it, but if you've, you know, had a chance to use it, let me know as well and tell me your experience. But again, I'm still doing that manually because I want to see, you know, I, I still want to make sure that I've curated, you know, all the photos. Now, why, why did I choose Mug Mug? You know, um, uh, obviously that's where I, you know, I've been hosting my website and it's, uh, you know, reasonably, reasonably priced. Uh, I don't sell my photos online. I mainly use it for uh, client access and, uh, and, you know, to back up all my photos. All right, so let me share some information that you would benefit from, you know, for uh, from SmugMug. And again, this is the platform that I've been using. I'll, I'll post a link below um, where you can actually get a, a discount. Because um, normally if you if you just go to their website and sign up, this is what you're gonna get. Uh, but with my link, you're gonna get a 15% discount. So, which is pretty cool. Okay, so you got a 14 day free trial. And, um, and again, one of the main features that I like about the, uh, this online platform is the, uh, the storage, okay? So you see here, it says unlimited full resolution photo storage. Now, at the time of uh, rec uh, recording of this video, uh, the, the videos, okay, let's just say if you've got saved on mobile phone, you can also upload them online, all right? So that also makes it uh, unlimited, you know, full, um, and limited storage in, in full resolution. You know, if you compare this with, let's say, Google Photos, I, um, I I use Google Photos myself, okay? But you know, their their photos they've got unlimited storage, which again will end June twenty first. Um, they do have about five gigs of free videos, um, so it's very limited. And then Amazon Photos, you've got unlimited. Uh, Photos as well. Me myself, I I I'm a subscriber for Amazon Prime, so I get unlimited full resolution. But again, you only get five gigs of video. Okay, so if you're if you do a lot of videos on your phone or if you're using it to to film something, then you probably want to consider um, uh, something else. Okay, um, but photo wise, Google. I oh, was sorry, um, Amazon. Uh, Amazon uh, Photos, uh, they do, you know, they do have full storage, full uh, resolution, which is really nice. 
Google Photos, they do have unlimited, but again, it's a reduced or let's say compressed quality. Okay. And, and that's pretty much it in terms of like the options, you know, um, if you've got other experience, uh, let me know with, uh, with a different platform. Um, yeah, feel free to share that information. So that's basically for cloud services. Um, I have uh, all my photos uploaded to the cloud, uh, again, using the SmugMug. And I've been using this platform for almost, I would say, like eight years now. Uh, pretty much ever since we, we, when I started. Uh, I've uh, looked at different options, but this is basically, this is basically, I'd say, you know, the best for, for what I need in terms of like what I'm looking for. Yeah, privacy to control. Um, you know, like, and for my portfolio. So it's, it's, a, it's my all-in-one platform, you know, for my photography, uh, photo, uh, photo galleries, okay. All right, so after you, let's just say, upload everything, you know, uh, on, on your cloud storage or your chosen uh, online uh, storage, I do archive them using external hard drives. Now, every year I, I buy, uh, two of uh, four terabytes. Well, this one is actually two terabytes, but I do have the four terabytes already plugged into my uh, to my uh, dual bay. And uh, over time, you know, I've I started with like a one terabyte and then two terabyte way back, you know, years ago. Um, I, I, I was tempted to get a lot of like the external drives like this. But the, the issue is, well, well not issue, but uh, you know, I, I feel like those um, might not last longer compared to like an actual hard drive, like the, the big one. So I, I chose the, the big ones instead. Plus, um, once I'm done, I also put them on a, uh, a fireproof case. So that way, you know, it's, it's, it's uh, safe, you know. Um, and again, I don't, I don't frequently need to access them because I'm, I, I've already archived them, you know. Um, so probably if I need to, if a client needs to do some like uh, retouch or anything, or maybe um, like uh, for albums, then you know I'm gonna go back and then and then use it. But otherwise, you know that stays there, uh, and, and that's that's why. Uh, I, I don't ever use like a NAS or a network attach uh, system, you know, for storage because I don't edit, you know, with, with the with the hard drives plugged in. Okay, I always do it internally. All right, so that's just for client photos. Now, if I'm doing family photos, then I would just pick uh, like a smaller one, you know, like a one or two terabyte. But the key here is you always buy two, you know, two every year. Uh, the family photos, not not a whole not a whole lot. Um, probably two terabytes will last me like two or sometimes three years. Uh, but again, I always buy in, in, in two. There's no brand preference and I've been, you know, getting the Western Digital and the, uh, the, the Seagate, okay, whichever comes on sale. I mean, since I'm getting two, then for me, it, it doesn't really matter, okay? As long as the price is right, okay? And I've got an extra two terabytes, actually for for my miscellaneous stuff, and that's where I just use these uh, smaller, you know, external hard drives for for downloads, uh, for anything that I need to, you know, carry with me portability. Um, yeah, so that's pretty much the use of the, the small ones. And uh, I've got a two bay right now. It's plugged in my computer. Um, I won't be able to show on the camera. I'm just gonna flash it on the screen and post the links uh, below. The ones that I've been using is the WAV link. And what I like about that is there's a target and a source. My MacBook Pro, they all use SSD, right? And these are all mechanicals. So that's why I, I don't edit, you know, externally. The pro tip is redundancy, okay? So you always wanna have a backup of something. Um, so for me, I've got a backup camera. So I've got two cameras, or at least two, I actually have three. Um, I've got, I, I'd say about uh, 12 sets of memory cards. You know, you always want to buy in two, you know, you always uh, keep that in mind, you know. 
Is it costly? Yes, it is. You know, uh, starting with like the, the device themselves, plus two, you know, plus the, oops, sorry, plus the storage. Right, you, you're, you're gonna be you're, you're gonna be incurring those like monthly or annual expenses. But again, you know, is it worth it? Absolutely. Um, that's pretty much it. You know, again, these videos are not sponsored by by these companies. I'm I'm not promoting you know like these um, these uh, companies or products. It's just based on my personal preference and what I like, based on my you know years and years of uh, experience and you know some. Uh, I guess failures with the, um, with 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 my backup solutions. Um, the only thing that's sponsored is my shirt here, <laughs> thanks to uh, Billy of Billy Boy Studios. Uh, you can find him on Facebook. I'll post links uh, below. Right. So ho hopefully, to you learn to you know you learn something new today um, in terms of my uh, backing process. All right, guys, thanks for staying with me. Now, if you made it till the end, please give me a high five or comment uh, a high five uh, modicon there so I know that uh, you've watched it until then. Okay, until next time, see ya.